salve te omnes, laetus vos excipio et iterum video in sessionibus nostris illineatis. My name is Dr. Z. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back. Today our goal is to explore the relationship between Latin and English, really asking some big questions for students of Latin. What is the relationship between Latin and English? Why is there so much Latin in the English language, and how did that happen? I mean, let's face it. Just by having a good command of English vocabulary, we already know quite a bit of Latin, certainly more than we realize, and certainly more than almost all of my students realize when they begin studying Latin on day one. So, exempli gratia, e.g., for example. Let's say these words together. Ready? Actor. Actor, right? Who is an actor? Someone who agit, right? Ago agere, to do, to drive. An actor is a doer. Animal. Animal. Why is an animal an animal? Because an anima is a soul or a spirit. If something has an anima, it's animated. If something is inanimate, it doesn't have a soul. It's not alive. Aquarium. Indeed, aquarium, it's a place where there's a lot of aqua. Asparagus. Delicious. That's pretty straightforward. Gladiator. Ah, gladiator. Said cur gladiator. Why is a gladiator called a gladiator? Because he has a gladius. A gladius is a sword. Therefore, a gladiator is someone qui pugnat cum gladio. Gymnasium. Gymnasium. Although originally a Greek word, this word went directly into Latin as a place where you could exercise or train. Of course, that's not really what the word gumnos or gumne means. The word gumnos in Greek or gumne, both masculine and feminine forms, essentially mean naked. And I regret teaching that to both of my children when they were very young, so whenever they were getting in the bath, they would simply start dancing around going gumne, 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 which... Actually, I don't regret it at all. Sculptor. Ah, someone who creates something out of stone sculpts it. Sculpare is to sculpt. Tuba. Indeed, you're like, is this a French horn, a tuba, or a euphonium? I mean, in either case, a tuba can be a tuba, it can be a trumpet. It's where we get the word tube. That's really what a tuba is. All of it interconnected and wound around many, many times in many, many coils. Educator, right? Duco ducere, to lead. Educator, an educator, someone who brings, who leads one out of themselves. Habitat. Yes, we look at this moose or this elk, an alcase, right? We've got habitat. Um, habitare, of course, is what? To live. So habitat is where an animal habitat. Podium, right? Again, originally a Greek word going directly into Latin. Something that has to do with the word foot, as in pod. Cadaver. Good. A cadaver, right? A dead body. And in this case, we have these chirurgi, we have these surgeons that are taking apart the body. The cadaver. Rabies. Excellent. Rabies, right? Gives us words like rabies in English, and of course it means in Latin, rabies is madness, right? Madness associated with rabies, associated with hydrophobia, um, which is really how it affects people when they become, if they're bitten by an animal who's infected by rabies, they have this irrational fear of water. That's what hydrophobia really is. That's associated with the madness, the rabies. Wideo, right? Video, right? What is it that I can see? Verbatim. Ah, verbatim. Verba or vocabula are words. So if someone is pre uh, performing poetry and they're performing it verbatim, they're doing it word for word. They've memorized it. And finally, weto. Weto. Okay, why is the Bill from Schoolhouse Rock vetoing himself? And what does that even mean? Weto wetare is I forbid, right? Weto, specifically the verb, I forbid something. If a politician has the power to veto a bill, they have the power to 
consider it null and void and to say that it has no validity to overturn the will of the legislature. Okay, so hold on a second. Expecta, ata, doctor. There are so many of these Latin words that are being used in English today, commonly. Does that mean that English is a Romance language? What is a Romance language? What are the most commonly spoken Romance languages today? There are some who would argue that there are, in fact, over 30 Romance languages in existence today. Um, and there are five principal ones. Certainly, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Italian, and Romanian have more speakers than any of the others. These are the five principal Romance languages, all of which are coming from something called Vulgar Latin. Okay, what is Vulgar Latin? So, Vulgar Latin is sometimes also called Sermo Vulgaris. A sermo can either mean like a, a sermo can often mean a dialogue, but where we get words like sermon, some type of a conversation. A group of dialects, sometimes these are called actually sociolects, which would be a dialect of a particular social class. It was commonly spoken, rather, these dialects were commonly spoken, but they were rarely written down during the classical period of the Roman Empire. There's classical Latin, which is typically used in writing, and there's vulgar Latin, which is used by people when they're going about having an everyday colloquial conversation. The word vulgar doesn't actually mean like bad or nasty. It just means common. Vulgaris is the same as communis in many respects. English is technically a Germanic language. We can be even more specific. It's technically a West Germanic language. It's most closely related to modern German and modern Dutch. Its origins come from Proto-Germanic, which is spoken in Iron Age Scandinavia, and there are some differences between West Germanic, Northern Germanic, and East Germanic languages. East Germanic languages don't even exist anymore. They existed at one point, but they are all extinct. Those are languages that would, would have been spoken by people like the Goths, the Ostrogoths, the Visigoths, the Vandals, etc. Northern Germanic languages, we're talking about Icelandic, Faroese, Danish, Norse, uh, uh, Swedish, um, uh, etc. Okay, so looking at the relationship between English and Dutch and German, we can see a lot of these words in their relationship quite easily. For instance, in English, book, in Dutch, book, in German, buch. Okay, they look a lot alike. In English, the word heart, in Dutch, hart, in German, herz. Okay, and then in English, for instance, thirst, in Dutch, dost and in German, durst, right? And you're like, well, okay, are those similar? Yeah, if we really take TH, which is in a different way of thinking about the letter D, right? If we just change that, be like, oh man, I am so dusty, right? Then it would actually look a lot similar. So let's think about our quaestio maximi momenti, right? Our important question. Okay, and here's where we're switching mostly into Latin. C, lingua anglica, Ex linguis germanicis venit, cur tot vocabula anglica radices latinas habent. It est cur tot vocabula anglica habent aut veniunt ex radicibus latinis. Okay, sunt tres rationes principales. Sunt multi rationes, said sunt tres principales rationes. Bene? Hmm. Prima ratio. Et prima quaestio vobis. Qui famosus Romanus navigat ad insulam Britanniae portans et exercitum et linguam Latina. Scisne? Scisne quis sit? Bene. Gaius Julius Caesar. Sine dubio Gaius Julius Caesar imperator et dictator. Okay. Ante quam Caesar ad insulam Britanniae advenit, iam Romani et Britanni inter se commercium conducebant. And how can we figure out what commercium means, right? They were conducebant in commercium. Good. Commerce or business. Excellent. Said post quam Caesar advenit, Commercium inter Britannos et Romanos augebatur. Ah, and how can we figure out that augebatur 
probably has something to do with being increased. Can you think of a word dealing with something becoming bigger The begin in English with an A-U-G? Right, like augment, right? The commercium augebatur inter Britannos et Romanos. Et insula, insula Britanniae, iam sub auctoritate Romanorum erat. Circa centum post annos, alter princeps nomine Claudius, redibat ad insulam cum suo exercitu, we remember what exercitus means from the previous picture, et Britannia facta est provincia Romana. Nonne? Igitur. Prima ratio. Caesar advenit, advenit cum exercitu ad insulam Britanniae et portat et fert linguam Latinam. Bene. Huh. Secunda ratio. Quis est hic vir? Hic miles. Hm. Potesne legere in pictura nomen huius regis? Ah. Possumus legere Gulielmas conquister. Ha. Huh. Gulielmas conquister. Quis est Anglicae Gulielmas conquister? Bene. Imowero William the Conqueror. Ah. Scisne quisit Gulielmas conquister? Gulielmus primus erat dux Normaniae. Bene non rex et dux, right? Where we get the word duke. Et um, hic Gulielmus cupiebat valde cupiebat esse rex Angliae. Igitur in anno millesimo sexagesimo et sexto, indeed the year 1066, Latin numbers are hard, Gulielmus navigabat ubi ad Britanniam et quid faciebat pugnabat contra exercitum regis Haroldi. Ah, Haroldus est rex Britanniae. Et ubi pugnabat contra regem Haroldem apud Hastingam. Right? This is the Battle of Hastings. Rege Haroldo mortuo, Gulielmus factus est rex Angliae. Gulielmus et Normani victores, dicebant dialectum franco gallicae Ah, et uh, hic dialectus habebat multa vocabula latina. It est dicebant dialectum franco gallicae cum multis vocabulis latinis. Et iam duces et nobilitas angliae dicebant et usurpabant hanc linguam quoque. Hm. Igitur, ergo itaque, per linguam franco gallicam, Latina lingua ad Britanniam venit. Mm-hmm. Constat? Intelligitisne? Bene. Ah. Possumus legere? Harold rex interfectus est? Oh, bene. Quid est? Huh. Est tapete. Right? This is where we get the word tapestry in English. It can also be a rug in Latin, but this is where we get the word tapestry. Tapete biocense. Mm-hmm. It asked the bayou tapestry. La tapisserie de bayou. Hoc tapete, plus quam ducenti pedum in longitudine, maximum tapete, narat, aut dat nobis, fabulam, Gulielmi conquistris, Gulielmi, et Haroldi totaliter latine. Harold rex interfectus est, bene. Ah, et hic u uilelm, Wilhelm, William, dux in magno navigio, right? He's in a really big boat, yeah. It, some of the Latin's very basic, but I, I find it comforting. Um, especially this scene, yes. Hic fecerunt prandium. Indeed, here they made lunch. Right? <laughs> Clearly it was important. Uh, et, et hic episcopus cibum et potum be ne dicit. Yes, the bishop blessed the food and the drink. Indeed. 
Okay. Huh. Tertia ratio. Okay. Cur magna majoritas librorum scribe bantur latine in tempore renascentiae. Ah, what do you think the tempus renascentiae is? Right, what's it look like in English? Exactly, it's the Renaissance, right? Why cur magna majoritas librorum scribe bantur in tempore renascentiae? Sine dubio ut omnes eos legeret. Bene? Potesne legere Andrei Vesalii Bruxellensis de humani corporis fabrica liber septimus. Ah, okay. So this is the liber septimus of Andrei Vesalii of Bruxellensis. Okay, so he's from Brussels. What's it about? De fabrica of the humani corporis, right? I mean, this is Andreas Vesalius, um, one of the most well-known authors from the 16th century, uh, who cr really put forward major, major advances in terms of the history of anatomy. And when he's writing, of course, he's writing entirely in Latin, and a lot of this survives. Uh, at in hoc tempore renascentiae, dum populi volebant discere omnia de uh, de uh, humani uh, corporis fabrica, de scientia, de medicina, de humanitatibus. None? Plus quam decam milia vocabula latina intrant linguam angliam. Bene, in tempore renascentia. Mm -hmm. Huh. Quid potes legere in hac pictura iam? Huh. We des ne sol. Ah. Mercurii. Venus. Telluris. It is terra. Martis. Iois. Saturnus. Ah. Et stellarum fixarum sphaira immobilis. Huh. Quid est? Hm. Quis primus de theoria heliocentrica et non Geocentrica scribebat. Nicolaus Copernicus, nonne? Mathematicus et astronomus, certe. In libro, nomine de revolutionibus orbium coelestium. Right? This is where we get the words celestial. Coelestium, coelestium. Okay, so what are our tres rationes principales? Extempore Julii Caesaris, linguae Britannicae, sub auctoritate latinae erant. Okay. Secunda ratio, ubi Guglielmus, rex Angliae, factus est, anno millesimo sexagesimo et sexto, nobilitas Angliae dicebant linguam franco-gallicam cum multis vocabulis latinis, et tandem in tempore renascentiae multa vocabula latina ad scientiam et ad humanitates pertinentia veniebant in linguam angliam. Bene. You gotta love these uh, Bayou Tapestry memes. Thou cannot toucheth this. Yes, stop. Tis be the time of hammer. Indeed. Uh, and I leave you with one final view of um, Andreas Vesalius and the De Humani Corporis Fabrica uh, where a skeleton is pondering um, a mandible. Okay then, Dr. Deacon Benefactum, uh, it's a pleasure being with you today. I hope you've enjoyed the content. Don't forget to check out some of the other videos about Latin, about mythology, and about ancient history. And as always, valete nunc et gratias omnibus.